up. How's everybody doing today? Everybody excited? Who, who's still tired from yesterday that came to the fall festival yesterday? Amen. Can we just give God a big hand clap for that and say thank you, Lord, for everything that you did yesterday? This is called stalling when I got up here late trying to get this stuff on. But can we just welcome to the house of the Lord today, church? It's a great day to be in here. It's a great day to be with like-minded believers. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. And I hope you came in ready to worship the Lord today. Amen. We'd like to welcome everybody here. If this is your first time at the Rock Worship Center, God bless you. We appreciate you being here today. Why don't we just open up with a prayer today? Can we stand up together today? Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. And I don't want to just pray. I want y'all to pray. I want you to believe God for something today. Amen. Amen. If we don't get beyond this part of church, that's okay. But right now, you got to come in believing in order to come in receiving. Amen. So I hope you come in today believing God for something. Folks that are joining us online right now, we pray that where you are, that you're believing for something also. The Bible talks about a prayer of faith. And this is a prayer of faith. Not just an opening for service, because this is not planned. But let's go believe it. Father God, we bless you right now to give you glory and praise as we come into your presence, Lord. Lord, as your word says, we enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, Lord. And let us be in that place today, expecting to receive something from you today, God. Expecting you to do great things in our lives. Expecting you to do great things in this service today, God. Lord, we come before you today, boldly before the throne of grace, saying, Lord, hear our needs, hear our prayers, God. We submit them to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I wish I could get five people to just enter into this with me right now and say, thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, God, because you know my need. Thank you, God, you know my desires. Thank you, God, you know the sickness in my body. Thank you, God, you know the need in my relationship. Thank you, God, you know the need in my finances. Thank you, God, you know the need in my children's lives. Thank you, God, you know the need in the community. Thank you, God, you know the need in the nation that I serve right now. But, Lord, thank you, God, that we get to serve you, Lord, that we get to come before you today. Lord, and we get to come together and be in your presence and walk out in the power of God in this house today, Lord. Lord, I speak authority into this house right now. Lord, I speak right now that the Holy Spirit has total freedom to move in this house today, to bring healing, to release power, God, today and do your will. So, Lord, as we come into your courts today with praise, Lord, let us be the church that's going to praise you today, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Are y'all ready to praise the Lord with us now? Hallelujah. I hope so, because we're ready. You're not all right If you got a little red in your eyes 
and ring a hallelujah today. Y'all won't, won't make me go back a few years. We got into the hallelujah anyhow mode. Amen. Sometimes we got to be there. You got to do hallelujah anyhow. Y'all going to make me preach all day long today. I'm ready. Amen. I have been drinking coffee since 6 a.m. I have been praying. I've been talking to people who came in fired up for God today. And the rest of y'all need to get fired up for God today. You need, you need to come in with a hallelujah. Y'all, what was the word that I, I released to y'all last week? Do y'all remember I said there was a word God gave me about this, about this same time? Regardless. Regardless. Regardless of. Regardless of what's going on in your life. Regardless of what's going on in the job. Regardless of what's going on in the government. Regardless of what's happening with your bank account. Regardless of, we need a hallelujah anyhow kind of moment. That regardless of anything that's going on, I'm going to praise my God anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen. We need, to, we need to tell them about somebody today that might encourage them just a little bit. Amen.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to do this. Hallelujah. Even though I may be embarrassed. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. Do you really believe what you were just singing? Yes. No, you don't. You don't believe that. Because some of you, and I'm not going to point you out, but some of you are hurting. Yes. Amen. What are you waiting on? Yes. <coughs> Come on. Yes. Come on, right now. Yes. Yes. Now you can't tell me that there's not some people hurting in you. Yes. Because some of you told me you were hurting. Okay? Now's the time. Yes. Are you going to stand through this whole service and not get what God wants you to have? That's right. Isaiah 37, 22 says, God says he's fixing the act. Not for your benefit, but to bring him glory. Now, are you going to hold back? Are you going to hold back and not let God have glory? The word says where two or three are gathered in his name. He's here. Yes, he's here. You think he's just going to walk through and do nothing this morning? I'm sorry, but y'all are stupid people. I've been stupid myself. Watch the news in the last two or three days. Watch these. 
um, and just encouraging one another. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, we are here to build one another up, encourage, and edify. You know, we're growing in the Lord. Amen. Sweet Jesus. Thank you. Come on up. <laughs>
because it was our verse of the day, and um, it's whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. giving thanks to God the Father through him. So let's make God a priority in our homes and in our lives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, we had a great time yesterday. And all those may know already, but it's official now. I am the champion of Cornhole over Elisha. <laughs> so maybe for a whole year I won't have to hear about it anymore, about a wine and chicken out and all that. But we do appreciate all the help yesterday. It was a great time together. I think, Jason, you, you got, don't you? You, you got, Brian, you have all the, the skills I heard. So you might be next to you, yeah. Brian, so, but you'll be here next year, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Thinking about it. But no, it was a good time. We had a wonderful event. Thank the Lord, the blessing of the weather was well to us, so we appreciate that. Yes, yes, you did. Uh, but anyway, it's time for offering. We love uh, helping give to the kingdom of God. Of course, we have the Turbyville Children's Home. That was uh, probably two more months we'll be giving into that, too. So that'll be a funds raised. Uh, what they do is they actually help children uh, have a place to stay. It's like an orphanage, but there's a lot of equipment, there's pool, there's uh, teaching areas, there's just a, a large area for them to just grow and learn from God and just to build them back up to get into a good family environment. So that's a Turby Tune Home, and of course here's our regular offerings. Uh, so let's stand to prepare, and I'm going to have a joke, but Elijah has a joke today. Oh, hey! Oh, so now he's going to give a joke, he also has to pray though, right? So Elijah gives a joke today, and then pray. Yeah, yeah, and I hope I'm not in there, but we'll see. Praise the Lord, it's a joke. A guy from Canada got me. Uh, went to Myrtle Beach and he found us while walking on the shore early in the morning. He found this jar. He rubbed it and a genie came out. And the genie told him he had three wishes. So the guy from Canada said, I want a million dollars. So the genie, boom, he got a million dollars. Then the guy from Canada said, Could you build me a road from America to Trinidad? I don't like sitting on that plane for five hours. The genie said, that's impossible. No one can do that. Move on to the other. So the guy from Trinidad said, please, please, help me understand Pastor Mark joke on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Say that, Lord, I pray they don't even see me today. They just just hear the word. 
and hear and see see what God has for you. And God's already been showing some of that in the house today. But we are finishing up this series today. Um, we have that first slide, the Yea Though I Walk. Uh, this was something that the Lord had showed me that we were going to do for this month. And no secret, it was around Halloween time. But uh, we are going into starting next week. Some, I just want to show you this real quick. Can I have that next slide? Some of y'all may have seen this on Facebook. If you follow us on Facebook, I'll try to share this stuff. But um, I was like, that's, that's, our, that's our series next month. What makes me happy? So would y'all do something for me? Would y'all send me some messages? Just through Facebook or text message, whatever. Just let me know what, what you know. I want you to think about that. What makes me happy? And I want y'all to send me some of your your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, if I have to, I'll promise not to call you out by name in in the message. Okay. You look with that. You I'm doing the old school, but not. But I, I want to, I want to hear some comments on that. But this is something that's going to be. Uh, how many people were here Wednesday night? So the people's here Wednesday night, y'all know what I'm going to say about this series. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So y'all make sure you come for that series. The series we're doing right now is awesome. I hope y'all have enjoyed it. I have. Listening to what God has to say. But if you've enjoyed this, this next series, it's going to be good. So those of y'all who don't come on Wednesday nights, you won't always be on the inside of the inside jokes, okay? But uh, Deb Ham says she'll explain it to you later. Hallelujah. Um... So that getting back to this, yea, though we walk. I want to talk about this. Let's go ahead and have that first slide I have up there. Because I just want to open up with this. All right? Anybody know what that is? It's an eclipse. That's a, there's a unique phenomenon that most of us have witnessed in our life, and it's a total solar eclipse. There's the part where we're talking about a total solar eclipse. And this happens when the moon passes between the earth and the sun in perfect placement that it completely blocks out the face of the sun. And as we've been there and seen this, it creates a darkness similar to dusk or dawn that we experience for a season during that time. Um, let's just go ahead and Matthew 27, verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And I just want to talk about that for just a moment because we know that when Jesus, this is when Jesus was being crucified for you and for me. And we know that the darkness just covered the land for this time span. And many people, both scientists and even some church scholars, theologians, think that this is exactly what took place while Jesus was on the cross. That there was a total solar eclipse that took place and it brought this darkness. You know, here's the, I still believe it was supernatural. I believe that may have been the way God moved in that moment to create that darkness. Because we had, when he was being crucified, the most horrible thing that could ever happen, that he could not be in the light of God at that moment. And if you've ever experienced an eclipse, you know, it's, it's kind of an odd feeling. Anybody ever been there? You ever notice how quiet it gets? Birds, birds stop chirping. You don't even see birds flying. You don't hear the crickets or anything else. It's just kind of an odd feeling. It just, it just gets so quiet. But in, let me have my science slide up here. Sometimes I'm a bit of a science geek. And some people say, how can you be a science geek and love the Lord? Because God created science, okay? Right. Let's have that if it's working. Our computer has been freezing up on us today, so we might be at one of those places right now. Y'all pray. We might need a new computer about there. But what happens when an eclipse is taking place is, in reality, it's a shadow that's being cast on the earth. The, the, the moon gets in exactly that place that it casts a shadow of the moon upon that section of the earth where we're at. And we're experiencing darkness during that time. But we're actually walking in the shadow. Walking in the shadow. And that's my message title today. And let's just take a quick word break to pray for God's your blessing be upon the word today. Let us hear from you. Let us apply it in our life. Let us grow from it. Lord, let this be some meat that we need today, Lord, that can nourish us to get through the week and get through the struggles that we face, Lord, and help us understand how this affects and impacts each of us today, Lord. Give us wisdom and give us knowledge on how to apply it, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, 23rd Psalm, let's just read verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes, us, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then the part that we wanted to get into. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. So today, the final valley we're going to talk about in this series is the valley of the shadow. Okay? And we start thinking about the valley of the shadow. We talk about the valley of the shadow of death all the time. So I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute. But 23rd Psalm is actually a very encouraging, very powerful section of Scripture. But unfortunately, we've turned it into something that we only read for funerals. But if you get in that, we're not doing a word study of this, of this passage of Scripture today. We may do that sometime coming up. But as David wrote this, there were some things in his life that he was going through. Just like some of us, can we be real? All of us have something we're going through. Okay? If that makes you feel any better about coming down to an altar, I want you to understand you're not alone. Everybody's going through something. But again, the 23rd Psalm, we get into that the valley of the shadow of death. And that's why it ends up being just for funerals. Because everybody thinks it's about death. But in reality, it's about life. And But it is that valley of the shadow of death that reminds us of our own mortality. In the flesh, I'm not living forever, but in the, in the, in the scripture, I'm immortal. Amen. In, in, in the spirit, I'm going to heaven. I didn't, that, that everlasting life didn't start, it's not starting the day you die. It starts the day you accept Jesus as your Savior. Amen. Amen. But again, David, when he's writing this, we don't, David went through a lot. King David went through a lot. Read your Bible. And I don't know if this was something he wrote during one specific low point or valley in his life, or it could have been a culmination of several of those. David, obviously, there's something about that valley in the shadow of death that he saw. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 6 talks about the shadow of death. Neither did they say, where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness? Now, there's a word for somebody right there. God will lead you through the wilderness. God will lead you through what you were going through. Amen. And who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death. Though a land, of no, a land that no one crossed and no one dwelt. And again, they're talking about the wilderness where the children of Israel had to spend 40 years because they chose not to walk into the promised land. And Can I please stick to my notes? <laughs> I just hear people complaining about their problems all the time. This is, has, this is not my message. But as I'm reading this, and they're talking about these people who spent 40 years in the desert, said, well, they didn't say, where's the Lord in this? No, you want to get on Facebook and you want to complain about your problems. You're not seeking the Lord in this. You're not looking at all the things that God's got you through to th before, and he'll get you through, but all you're looking at is all the struggles and all the problems, and complain about it. Instead of do something about it. Amen. Y'all gonna get mad at me, but I just gotta preach. He's not letting me move. You're gonna have to start doing something about these problems and quit complaining about them. I mean, people complain to me. They complain to Brenda. I'm sure they complain to y'all too. They complain to y'all about me though. It's <laughs> Pastor, can quit preaching like that. Threaten to take John three sixteen away from us. How dare he? There again. That's Wednesday night stuff. But it's like the, the, you don't want to stay in the wilderness, do you? Jerry, thank you for being obedient to the Spirit today. Thank you for being obedient to the Holy Ghost. And he's the one that made me go drink two more cups of coffee and get even more excited because he came in and got me fired up even more than I already was. I said, I'm going to need some coffee today. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I might get another cup of coffee right now just to keep you all here the rest of the day. Don't stay in the wilderness. I'm going to get back to my notes, but I'm just reading this, and it's just like stars going on. Don't stay in the wilderness. Amen. But we're talking about the valley of the shadow of death. That was all what was on my heart and my mind when I came up with this, with this series. I said, this is the last Sunday is going to fall the day before, before Halloween. And I'm going to be preaching about the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. 
Because that was my timing. It was no joke. To hit this around Halloween, hoping people would share it. Some of the people under, oh, they're going to be talking about the valley and the shadow of death. I need to go away and hear about this. Because right now, the world around us, they're celebrating death. They're celebrating evil, evil and witchcraft. And it's like I've had a couple people say that after I spoke about that last week, said, you know, I noticed my neighbors has got some of the worst decorations I've ever seen. Yeah. Preached last week, people down the road from me went and hid the big old skeletons in the backyard. <laughs> um, but, you know, I guess I was just hoping curiosity might catch some people. They wanted to come in and just hear it. That's the way a lot of people got saved in the Old Testament. They wanted to go see miracles taking place. I want people to start getting curious, wanting to come to the Rock Worship Center because they're hearing about miracles taking place. They're hearing about lives being changed, relationships being restored. Amen. So that's why y'all can't stay in the wilderness. You got to come out. Amen. Amen. The valley of the shadow of death. But here's what happens. I'm studying this. The Holy Spirit just dropped some revelation on me. And yes, I believe that God, God still speaks to me. He speaks to me through his word, but God still speaks to me in my spirit. And in the midst of this study, he just showed something to me about this. Instead of focusing on the valley of the shadow, the of death part, to focus more on the valley of the shadow. Y'all might have to just be careful. Where's my folks that ate breakfast this morning? Make sure they ain't asleep. So when you come here and tell me you done been to Sun Valley Cafe and ate a big old breakfast, I know you had pancakes. <laughs> and pancakes will make you sleepy as turkey will. Amen. So y'all y'all stay awake with me. If you need another cup of coffee, I'll tell Bruce to get you one. Okay? But you need to stay awake. Take some notes. Folks that are joining us online, y'all take some notes. Say hello to us. Let us know you're there, what you think about what we're saying today. But we're talking about an eclipse today. We, talk, we showed that picture of an eclipse and how it blocks us from the sun. Today we're looking at places and lives that stands between you and the sun, as in S-O-N, the Son of God, standing between you and Jesus. Hey, we got our picture now. Praise the Lord. So that's that picture we were looking for a little while ago. But if you start looking, see where that moon is right in between there, that, that precise alignment. But in our own spiritual lives, we can be there. What's standing between you and God? What's standing between you and God's blessings? What's standing between you and God blessing you in your life, in all areas of your life? We just did a series about the blessing a few months ago. We talked about all areas of your life are designed to be blessed by God. So when something's not being blessed by your God, you need to find out what's standing between you and God. And I don't want y'all to get mad at me today, but I want y'all to celebrate because I want to help you get to those places in your life where you can get through the strongholds and you can get to the place of blessing. Amen. So we got to find out what's there, what's standing between us and God. Amen. And since it's Halloween, can I just go ahead? I'm going to tell y'all a scary story. This is probably the scariest thing I could come up with, but since Halloween's tomorrow, y'all expected this. Anytime that you are separated from God, that's a scary place to be. Amen. Nothing gets any scarier than that. People, I was talking to people the other day. I used to, I, in my BC days, I used to love a good horror movie. But The Exorcist, that movie, when I was an unchristian child, uh, that movie scared me to death. I didn't ever want to watch it. I was home the other day and I was flipping through Facebook and here's that ugly face popping up on Facebook and it's downtown Monroe at the Dow Center and they're showing a live version of it. I, said, I didn't even want to see that thing's face on Facebook. I started denouncing it in Jesus' name. But, but that's what people are looking for, to be scared. But they should be scared when they're separated from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And if you haven't yet, chances are you're going to find yourself in this valley of the shadow. And when you're in that valley of the shadow and something's standing between you and God, you're going to be experiencing an eclipse in your life. And that's a spiritual eclipse. If you're taking notes, I suggest writing that one down. Because you may need to pray about that. God, why am I in a spiritual eclipse right now? Why i am in this place where I'm standing in the shadow and there's something standing between me and the sun. And instead of getting the blessings, I'm getting the darkness. Amen. we got to come out of that darkness and into his marvelous light. But with spiritual eclipse, so here's my word from you today. And I'm praying about this, and sometimes I was like, Lord, this is just not spiritual enough. I need to come at this with a more spiritual attitude. And God said, no, the word that I'm giving you right now is alignment. So again, if you're taking notes, write that word down, alignment. Okay? Because alignment, the definition in the dictionary says a state of agreement or cooperation between persons, groups, nations, etc. with a common cause or viewpoint. To me, my definition that I want to give you today of alignment is being exactly where you need to be to receive God's blessings on your life. Amen. Amen. That's spiritual alignment that we're talking about. The alignment we're talking about is spiritual. 
These solar eclipses that we're talking about, they, they're so rare because the precise alignment that has to take place between the moon and the sun and the earth to create that total solar eclipse. So you've had the partials and it happens in some other places and it's not happening here. But it's, that's what's necessary for this to happen. It's so rare, they're so rare in fact, I'm a, I'm a statistics person, okay? The last time we had a total solar eclipse was August 21st, 2017. I remember it. I was working a public job at the place and they came out for the first time ever with a solar eclipse. They get, they, remember the glasses? Everybody was getting the glasses. I had me some eclipse glasses. Hallelujah. And what was I doing with the eclipse? And I was outside with them stupid glasses on. Hoping nobody was getting my picture going to put it on Facebook. Amen. But you know there were plenty of those. The next one is not until April 18th, 2024. It's less than two years away, but there's going to be another total solar eclipse. But then from 2024, the next one is not until August 12th, 2045. Now that's there in the U.S. There will be in some other areas. But that's how, how far apart they are. And I know this sounds like a bunch of scientific mumbo-jumbo. And y'all didn't come to hear about science. You come to hear about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and faith. But I'm laying this out as an example of why. Say why. why? Okay, because a lot of y'all, that's what's in your spirit and you just won't see. It's why. Why? Why has it been so long since you've experienced God's blessing in your life? Why has it been so long since you've experienced God's blessings in your marriage? Why has it been so long since you've experienced God's blessing in your job? Why has it been so long since you've experienced God's blessing in the peace in your life? Amen. Why? Why is it like this? Why can't I receive a blessing? And then why is it through your eyes everybody else is blessed but me? Who am I preaching to today that you feel that way? You look out and you're like, everybody else is at peace. Everybody else is blessed. But me, I feel like I'm in this bad place right now. But it's all about alignment. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's all about alignment. It's all about alignment. Talking about this term spiritual eclipse, and I didn't find that in the Bible. That's something God gave me. As I'm studying about a, a solar eclipse, and God has shown me dark places in life. This place of spiritual eclipse, being separated from God and His blessing. Talked about valleys. This is still the valley of the shadow, those low places in life that we run into. And, and I told you how far apart those dates were. I really wish I could tell you that spiritual, the spiritual alignment to be required for a spiritual eclipse would be as rare as those alignments for the earth and the moon to come up. But unfortunately, it can happen anytime. Amen. It can happen anytime. You can be in that spiritual eclipse right now. In reality, some of you might be there right now. Amen. Depending on your spiritual alignment. Where's God in your life? Where's the Holy Spirit at? Where are you at? Where's your mind at? Amen. It begins with the mind. Where's your head? Where's your head? Is your head in it today? Is your mind in it today? Or are you all somewhere in left field thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch? I mean, this is the thing about it. You need to hear this. And again, spiritual life, we can quit beating around the bush and we can call this what it is. It's sin. Sin separates us from God. That's where the spiritual eclipse kicks in. Separates us from God, it separates us from His blessing. Just like that moon in the eclipse, sin stands between you and the Son of God. Sin stands between us and Jesus. And you're standing in the shadow instead of standing in His light. Amen. Tell somebody, it's all about alignment. I want y'all to get this. I want you to go home with this today. I want you to think about this. I want you to be sitting there at the supper table today. And I don't know why that word alignment is stuck in my head and I can't get it out because the Holy Spirit wants you to understand what's wrong. The Holy Spirit wants you to understand what is standing in the place that I can't receive God's blessings in my life. And y'all aren't going to like this, but it's choices that you make every single day of your life determine your, your alignment with God. God don't move. Nothing moves him. Nothing budges him. He is always there. Nothing moves him. And it don't take a lot to move some people. It don't take a lot to move us out of alignment and be in these places that we can't receive that. Amen? Amen. It's all about alignment. Amen? <clears throat> Choices that you make every single day. Amen. Ever had a car that was out of alignment? You ever drove a car that was bad, hit hit one of these Union County potholes and, 
And all of a sudden, the car is pulling hard to the left or it's pulling hard to the right. The good ones, when it's really good and you know it's when you hit the brakes real hard and it just runs off the road. It pulls so hard. Of course, that could be a brake caliper too. There's a lot of fun stuff. But alignment, when you're driving a car and it's out of alignment, you'll know it. Yeah. Same thing in your spiritual life. When you're out of alignment, you're going to oh, you're gonna know it. Amen. You're going to know it. When you can't sleep at night, you're laying down in bed and all these thoughts, when, when you have no peace, even though you just went to the preacher and he prayed for you, you went to the altar and people prayed for you, and you watched Charles Stanley or Jesse Duplantis or whoever it is you watch on the internet and, and, and all of these things, and that still didn't make you feel spiritually aligned with God. That just tells you that something is in spiritual alignment out of place. Something's between you and God. Amen. And we have to understand that because choices that we make get us there. Choices. There are choices that we have to make every day. And there are choices that you must make every day. And number one is righteousness. Standing in the right place with God. That's alignment. Being in right standing. We all know that. Being in right standing with God. That's what righteousness is. And the other is holiness. And y'all going to hear a whole lot more about holiness. Holiness is abstaining from sin. And before those words got out of my mouth, there's somebody in this church or somebody online saying, oh, I hear you preaching out there, but I can't be righteous in myself. No, but you can with Jesus Christ. And no, I can't abstain from sin. The Bible says we all fall short and sin daily. It doesn't really say that, but y'all have accumulated that in your mind and you've, you've turned it into that. We don't have to sin every day. Holiness is something that you have to choose. Amen. So here's the thing about it. You can live in that lifestyle, but it's the thing you've got to make some choices in your mind. And you can start that by another choice. You can choose to listen to the Word of God. You can choose to read it, hear what God says, come down to these altars, pray for God to cleanse you, pray for God to sanctify you, pray for God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, that you can be walking around in the power and fullness of the Holy Spirit, ready to fight the devil at any given time. Amen. And when he stands up and he tries to pull you off the road into sin, you can stand up and say, I don't have to do that because the power of God is living within me today. Amen. Tell somebody it's all about alignment. It's all about alignment, being in right standing with God. It's also about choices. And you are responsible for your choices. Amen. The devil did not make you do it. Amen. I'm not in notes any longer. You have to take responsibility for your choices. Amen. That old will show my age. Because some of y'all go, huh? How many people remember Flip Wilson? <laughs> Y'all remember Geraldine? What, what was Geraldine's favorite saying? The devil made me do it. Ain't no devil making you do it. It's choices that we make. The farther you are from God, the less convicted you're going to be of things. We're preaching about that on Wednesday nights. Y'all come on, amen. But you got to make these choices. It's alignment, it's choices. And the Bible shows us some great examples of choices that confront us every single day. I'm going to try to get back in these notes, guys. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It was one of my go-tos. I use this all the time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He'll direct your paths. That's a good amen. 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 Let's give it an amen. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. We do a lot. Amen into that verse right there. Hallelujah. So what does it say? So you can choose to do it your own way. You can make that choice to do it your own way. You can choose not to listen to God. And you will be out of alignment with God. And you're going to find yourself in a spiritual place of eclipse. And you are not going to experience God's blessings on your life. Or you can make a choice to apply this verse to your life. And you can choose to do it God's way. Amen. God's not going to make you do it. I, I, I've already asked for that. He said no. I have... I know y'all think y'all might think this is crazy to hear a preacher say this, but I have literally got on my knees multiple times in my life and prayed, God, take free will away from me. I don't want it. I don't want the responsibility of free will. Take it away. He won't do it. Because we are responsible, but we have to choose to do it God's way regardless of what you think or feel. Mm. I prayed about this. I said, Lord, I that word wasn't originally there. I had to go back to that. You can choose to do it God's way regardless of the way you think 
or feel. Amen. And then you can be in alignment with God and then you can be flowing in his blessings. How many people want to be flowing in God's blessings? Amen. I hope every hand in here will come up. But we run into the... I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the Bible. I don't feel like going to Bible study. I don't feel like calling that person and being an encourager to them. I don't feel like going to church. I don't, I don't feel like exercising. <laughs> I got a friend of mine told me one day he's called me. I said, I got to leave. I got to work out. Man, you love to work out. I said, that's a lie. <laughs> I despise it. Every time I work out, I hate it. There's nothing about it I like. So I don't feel like it, but I do. You don't feel like apologizing to someone. You don't feel like forgiving somebody. You don't feel like getting up every day and purposing in your heart. And I'm getting to this scripture in a minute. Say, God, I'm going to do it your way today. I'm not going to do it my way. It's choices, and it's not based on feelings. Church, we got empty pews here because people have gotten their feelings hurt. Because we're preaching the truth of God's word. Amen. And it hurt their feelings. There's feelings that have been hurt because I'm too direct. I was waiting on an amen on that one. I'm who God made me to be. I have to be who God made me to be. I am the left-handed man and the right-handed tribe. That was from our conference. That's, that word was for me. It's not about what we feel like. Serving God is our life. It's not based on feelings. So you can, you can, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you can choose to do that and you can be in right alignment with God. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. This is another one of my go-tos. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh my. Then, all these things. Amen. And or then, it's interchangeable. Seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's all about alignment. Amen. Number one, seek first the kingdom of God. That means God has to become your priority and not an option. Amen. Because what has happened in Western culture and religion today is that God is an option. He's okay. I will go to church. I will pray. I will I will do Bible study. I will read my Bible. I will do all these things if there's nothing better for me to do at that moment. Amen. I will go to church on a regular basis if I don't have an opportunity to do anything else. Amen. That's the problem and that's where so many people are out of alignment because Jesus has become an option instead of a necessity in their life. Amen. Jesus has become the last resort Amen. instead of the first choice. And that's the problem. And it's like we say, we keep having the same problems. That spiritual alignment, that spiritual eclipse. You have all these problems in your life. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Get in your life lined up with God's will. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't liking this not one little bit. Amen. Said, and then all these things will be added. Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom, righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. We've preached about that, but I want you to embrace it. What are we seeking? Righteousness and joy and peace. Righteousness. Right standing with God. And then you got joy and then you got peace. And I know and I can feel it in my spirit that a lot of people are missing out in the joy and the peace place in their life. And you start wondering, why am I missing out in the joy and the peace? Because you're not in alignment. Amen. You're not in alignment to receive it. Something is blocking God's blessings in your life. Daniel 1 and 8, that's one I was just saw. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And I'm, I'm going to go here and I'm going to make some people upset with me today. Y'all going to have to help me recruit new church people. Because I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. And they ain't going to feel like coming back to church no more. They ain't going to feel like coming to this ministry. He's mean. He's mean. Amen. But Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. With the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with, nor with the wine, which he 
drank. Don't be messing with my wine when I <coughs> post my stuff on social media. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You can choose to be different than the world around you. Just because everybody else does it does not mean that you should. You can choose to say no. You can choose to say no. I'm going to read my notes and I'm going to preach here for a little bit. You want to write one down? This is it. Integrity is more important than popularity. Ooh, come on. <laughs> Integrity is more important than popularity. Amen. Amen. Daniel made integrity a priority. And you should do the same. Yes. What is standing between you and God and receiving his blessings in every area of your life? Maybe it's that pot that you smoke that you don't want nobody to know about. Maybe it's that occasional box of wine. And that's why y'all run for me in Walmart when you see me. Because <laughs> y'all know. There's Pastor Daniel. Better run. We got a box of wine. You know he's going to see it. He's going to preach about it. But, like, it don't matter. Because they all send me friend requests on Facebook. And then they go home and they partake of the box of wine on Facebook. Woo! Sometimes I like them just so y'all know. I just don't like that. Lord, just let them know I've seen that. But the thing is, God saw it a long time before I did. So what's standing? Is it that little bit of drinking that you do? Is that the thing in your life that's, that's keeping God? And y'all, uh, I will preach, I will teach, I will sit with you one-on-one, -on -one, and I will tell you why you should not drink. There ain't nothing good in it for you. And y'all get about to that little wine for the stomach's sake, that spoonful. That's a spoonful. When I was a child, my grandma gave me rock and rye. She didn't give me a bottle. She gave me a spoonful. When we was 13, we stole the bottle. Okay. Testimony time. Again, maybe it's the recreational drugs you do. I don't care if it's legal in Colorado. It ain't legal in North Carolina. And there ain't nothing in it that's going to do anything other than separate you from the mind of Christ. Put it down. What is it that's keeping you from receiving the, the joy and the peace? Maybe it's that pornography that you're sneaking and looking at all the time. And you, you, Again, that's two weeks in a row I've talked about pornography. Get ready to get me a couple more empty seats in here. But maybe it's that pornography on your smartphone, on your computer. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere. Even if you don't want to see it, you're going to see it. You know, just don't, you know, don't take friend requests that you don't know the people. You're going to get introduced to some pornography. You know, but it's this stuff. Maybe it's that in your life. Maybe it's just some of these other strongholds in your life. But are choices that we have to make. Y'all need, need to underline Daniel 1 and 8 in your Bible because he purposed in his heart every day not to defile himself. He said, I got up today and I said, I'm not going to sin today, God. I got up today and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to make it my purpose today to abstain from sin. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy. But before anything else, you'll never hit a target unless you're aiming for it. Amen. Amen. Whew. Old Miss Sarge, when we were in our first church, if you ever go in my office and you see a World War II vet hat, that was a hat she gave me. She was a World War II Marine. Some of y'all heard me talk about her. Um, loved her so much. Had the honor of doing her funeral when she passed away. Also had the honor of we made her live with us for a little while when she had broke her leg. Called me to take her to the hospital. I took her to the hospital and I wouldn't let her go home with a broke leg, so she came to my house and I went by her house to get a few belongings and her chihuahua to come to the house with us. And Miss Sarge, Leela Funderburg was her real name, Miss Sarge, she said, now when you go in there, beside of my bed, there's a box. And I want you to reach in that box and get my pistol and bring my pistol to me. 
because I have to be ready if I have to defend myself. Miss Sarge told me a story one time about that pistol. She said, I looked outside and I saw a snake trying to get in my house. And I got my pistol. And I reached that pistol out and I closed my eyes. And I said, God, guide my hand. And I shot one time and I killed that snake. I said, praise the Lord, but you ain't getting that pistol in my house. <laughs> I said, that pistol is staying in my gun safe until you leave. I am not about to get up to go to the bathroom at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I hear somebody, God, guide my hand. How many people honestly would close your eyes and try to hit a target with a gun? You would try that? Okay, we need to get you down to the altar today. Amen. But it's the same thing in life. We have to get up and there's a target and that target is holiness. We're going to talk some more about that soon. But we have to aim for it. You can choose to be different than the world around you. Again, just because everybody else is doing it. Just because everybody else is drinking. Just because all your friends. Y'all know how many friends I still have from my drinking days? One. I have one friend that remained with me from my drinking days. Everybody else could no longer choose to hang around me. The Bible says come out from among them and be separate, but y'all don't want to hear about that one either. I'm going to give you one last scripture. Well, I might have one more after that. Look, I lied to myself in my notes. I, I got caught by that preacher saying this is my closing in my own notes. Matthew 7, 13, 14. This has a lot to say about what we're talking about. This is about choices. This is about alignment. This is about coming out of that place of, of spiritual eclipse and getting into that place of the blessings of God. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Amen. Again, if you're taking notes today, this is a good one to write down. There are no shortcuts in the kingdom. There are no shortcuts in the kingdom. It will require denying yourself and picking up your cross to follow Jesus. I can't be guilty of being that preacher that just says, get saved and your life's going to be easy. I, I, I can't tell you that. And sometimes it may sound like when you're preaching like this that living the Christian life may be the more difficult route. It may sound like Jesus is not the easiest way, and it's not. But I promise you it's the best way. Because Jesus said, I am the way. And it is worth it to choose to follow God. It is worth it to deny yourself. It is worth it to say no to some things. It is worth it to say, I'm not going to do it my way today, but I'm going to do it your way, God. It is worth it to come down to an altar and say, God, I'm just giving it all over to you because I don't want to leave with this or I don't want to leave without this. So please, God, identify to me in my life what is standing between me and you. Amen. And I would love to just go on and preach about this. And I told you all I preached way too long last week. The good news is you don't have to wait 70 to 25 years to change your spiritual alignment and get back into place with blessing. You can do it right now. You can choose to do it today. You can make that move and get right back in good standing with God. This is my final verses. James 4, 7 through 10. Therefore, submit to God. Tell somebody it's about choices. Resist the devil. Oh, we still, we, is this computer locked up again? I think the computer might be locked up again. We're just going to go ahead and get a new computer. You know, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say, Lord, we, we need a new computer. <laughs> submit to God. Resist the devil. If you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. It's all about choices. You have to make the choice to submit to God. He won't force himself upon you. You have to make yourself, you have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
He's not going to force that upon you. You have to submit to God. And then the second part of that says, and resist the devil. Resist the urges. Resist the temptations. Resist the status quo. Resist the, the urge to be a person of popularity instead of a person of integrity. Resist that because that's the devil. That's the devil saying, oh, ignore that little narrow gate and that difficult path. Look at here. I got an automatic gate opener and a paved road right here for you. I got a golf cart. Wait, I just hop in and I'll give you a ride. That may sound silly, but that's about the way we look at it. We want to take the easiest way. Choose to submit to God. Choose to resist the devil. Draw near to God. First time I ever read that, I read it in my heart like, take the first step. You take the first step, God will meet you halfway. Sure. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. They say, what little priest? Cleanse your hands. That's, that's a choice. That's your responsibility. How do, I, how do I cleanse myself from sin? You come down here and you give it over to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need you to be my Savior. I want to be washed by the blood of the Lamb. I want to be washed clean and white as snow. And we're going to open the altars one last time today. But if you're here today, close your eyes. Do me, do me a favor. Let me. If there is anybody in this house today that does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let today be the day. All eyes closed. I'll call y'all out. Ask Spencer. All eyes closed. All you have to lift your hand in this house if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior and you want today to be that day. Praise the Lord. Everybody in this house must be saved. But here's the second question. Don't open your eyes yet. How far has your life gotten away from God? How bad has your life got messed up? How much are you in that place of spiritual eclipse and you're out of alignment with God? If you're here in this house today, again, all eyes are closed. And you need to get back into that place with God. I'd say, today I just want to recommit my life to God and get in right standing. Can you raise your hand? Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to do this. I appreciate you guys raising your hands. Everybody can open your eyes now. I just want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. We're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to pray this together. Where are you at? Would you pray with me? Say, Father God, Father God. thank you, Lord. For giving me a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus for being my Savior. Jesus. I choose you today, Jesus. I choose you today, Jesus. As, my As my Savior. Restore in me. A clean heart. And an upright spirit. Strengthen me today. To be the person that you have called me to be. Today is a new day. I choose to live my life for you. I choose to draw near to you. I choose to resist the devil. This is the hard part. Y'all pray with me. Lord, help me. In these areas of stronghold in my life, give me strength to say no to the things in my life that are not from you. Cause me to desire the things that please you. I give myself to you today, Jesus. Every area of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Guys, with that, we're going to close today. I don't think there's any reason to add to that prayer. God has already done some great things in here today. If you just prayed with me today, God's doing something in your life right now also. Folks, I said today I want to recommit my life to the Lord. Just do that. 
walk in that, walk out of this house today knowing that you are a new creation, that you are forgiven, that you are set free, and God has released to you the kingdom of God, that righteousness and joy and peace in your life. Now walk in it, stay in proper alignment, and make the right choices. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Come to church Wednesday night. Amen.